Well, now that Cettarelli has firmly planted his flag in the gubernatorial race, he joins a crowded field of contenders. We mentioned Republican John Bramnick, who is so far Cettarelli's biggest competitor in the primary, but also Democrats Steve Fulop, Ras Baraka and Steve Sweeney. That list is only expected to grow, making it a much different playing field than the election four years ago. So does a center-right candidate like Cettarelli have a clear path forward? I asked Michael Rasmussen, director of the Rebovich Institute for New Jersey Politics at Ryder University. So, Micah, good to have you, as always, uh, especially on a day like this. This has now become an increasingly widened field. What do you make so far of the cast of candidates we have? Well, it's a very full field that we're talking about, both on the Republican side and the Democratic side, um, that's developing. Voters are going to have a lot of choices. And if we wind up with another primary next year that doesn't have the line, then this really is going to be the voter's choice. And they're going to get a full range of options. Uh, Jack, se Jack Cettarelli seems to be carving out a um, center-right position, yeah. but you're going to have candidates to the right of him, maybe like Bill Spadia, and candidates to the left of him, like John Bramnick. So I think they're going to get a full range of options. Yeah. Does not having the line hurt a candidate like Cettarelli more? I mean, he's someone who picked up all 21 right. Republican Party organization endorsements back in the last race in 2021? It's a very good point and a great question. I think he will be strong enough, given his statewide name recognition, that he will do well either under a line system or without one. Hmm. Um, he'll sort of rise to the top of the pack just because people know a lot about him. This is his third run um, for governor statewide. So um, I think he'll do well under either rules. But as you say, he probably has the most to lose given that he has those relationships with every county organization and has maintained them, has really gotten around the state for these last two and a half years and the four years before that. Yeah, I mean, I've been seeing since his announcement, and we've been talking about, of course, he's been this sort of candidate that hasn't gone away, for lack of a better word. I mean, he's got a lot more at stake when you look at it from through that lens. But how does he differentiate himself from someone like a John Bramnick, who I am guessing he's the two are going to be compared uh, the most. Yes. So even last night uh, during his announcement, he tried to draw some parallels. He said that Bramnick uh, works too closely with Democrats. He said, you know, he all but said, this is a guy who voted for Matt Platkin as attorney general, mm. voted to confirm him. And so, so that's really a message for the more right. Uh, it is. Uh, yes. Members of the party. Yeah. So I think he's going to try to make himself um, a little bit to the right of Bramnick, but not as far as Spadia. He's going to go for that center right uh, positioning if he can get away with it. He's what does he need to do with his messaging when it comes to Donald Trump? Well, he has thrown himself in. He's endorsed Trump. Um, and so you're going to have a never Trumper in the race. You're going to have Bramnick, who very clearly has said that this is not the direction for New Jersey, New Jersey Republicans. And you're going to have Cittarelli, who has said, I am endorsing him. Um, I am supporting him. I am throwing myself in with him. So a lot depends on who wins this presidential race. Right. Um, if it's Trump, there's almost certainly going to be New Jersey becomes almost the first um, uh, midterm state, right, where we become the first state where we have the earliest midterm election. That's an interesting way to put it. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, okay, so if we look at these candidates as a whole and we know that the pendulum tends to swing from Democrat to Republican mm -hmm. after Murphy having served eight years, um, what's the path forward then for someone like Cetarelli? I mean, you said he's got to sort of differentiate himself, but folks in New Jersey do like moderates. They do. And you heard some of that last night. He tried to speak to property tax freezes. Well, that sounded a lot like the Democrats platform from 2023, which didn't go so well for yeah. Republicans last year. He also had a little bit of uh, tilting at the windmills, not to, you know, not that he's Don Quixote, but um, and he was back on the parental rights stuff. So again, that cycle didn't go so well for Republicans. He's got to have to make a, a more compelling case. Uh, for why that would be different than what we had last year. In districts, it didn't go so well for Republicans. It's going to even be a more uphill climb to run statewide on those kinds sure. of issues that didn't play and district wide. We'll remind everyone this is still a year away, more than in 2025. Micah, thanks so much for coming in. Appreciate Thank you. it.